It is the land of Karnataka your feet lie on. It is the treasure of Sahyadri your life sustains on. It is sandalwood that your senses feel. It is Kaveri that your thirst craves. Turning the pages of Indian history, historic richness, heritage, glory of nature, majesty of literature, archaeological prosperity, scientific orientation and academic excellence. It all can be traced down to one state named Karnataka. As the great poet Sri Vijaya states, Karnataka is the state that extends from river Godavari in the north and river Kaveri in the south. Owing to its naturally occurring richness and by the excellence and ambience accomplished by its people, Karnataka has sustained itself as one of India's most prominent parts. The heritage of Karnataka has been enriched by the royalties that ruled the state since time immemorial. The Kadamba dynasty was the first among the royal families that ruled Karnataka. Following them, the Hoysalas, Gangas, Chalukyas, Wadiyars of Mysore, Sultans of Bijapur and many more strengthened the foundation of the state that we see today. History claims to us confidently that Karnataka used to be as rich as people selling gold and pearls on streets during the era of Krishna Devaraya in Vijayanagara. Abdul Razak, a visitor from the Middle East who came exploring to India during this time described the Vijayanagara empire as something he had never seen before and never even expect to see in the future. It wasn't just Vijayanagara. Every empire within the state of Karnataka ruled by various dynasties were proud embodiments of excellence in architecture culture literature and justice come 1956 the divided empires of karnataka were unified to be called mysore The day it happened, the 1st of November, is observed as Kannada Rajyotsava all over the state since. However, the unified state was renamed to be called Karnataka in 1973, and Kannada has been the dominant language of the state ever since it has come to be. The visionary architect of the Karnataka state, Kengal Hanumantayya, established the Center for State Affairs and named it the Vidhana Sauda at the capital city of Bengaluru. Karnataka has been divided into four administrative blocks, 30 districts and 177 taluks. 29406 village vicinities have been recognized within the state. Under the leadership of a chief minister, 225 MLAs and 75 MLCs administer the state affairs, sustaining Karnataka as one of the biggest assets of the country. Karnataka has its own identities in every dimension we can point. A red and yellow flag is observed to be a symbol of our cultural richness, while the elephant is Karnataka's symbolic animal. The Indian roller is the officially named symbol of Karnataka among birds. Lotus the official flower and sandalwood the official flora. Of course, the most dominant and majestic folklore of Karnataka, Yakshagana is recognized and accepted as the official cultural symbol of the state the state song that sings out jaya bharat jananiya tanujate which means hail the proud daughter of mother india is sung by children and adults alike throughout karnataka depicting the unity and pride we all feel in being kannadigas the song was written by one of the greatest poets of all times gnanapeetha awardee kuvempu who till date stands as a representation of Kannada literature. Speaking of literature, Karnataka is amongst the pioneers of the art of intellectuals in the country. From old to new, literature in Karnataka is on par with the world's best. 
Poet Vijaya had once called Kannada writers as the most experimental folks ever, which is validated by the vast diversity of Kannada literary works available even today. Unparalleled excellencies such as Ranna, Pampa, Janna, Ponna, Lakshmesha, Kumaravyasa, Harihara, and Raghavanka set up the standards of intellectual literature for the world in Karnataka. There was also another line of poets and composers such as Purandara Dasa and Kanaka Dasa who produced exceptional ballad-like poetry. In complement, poets like Basavanna, Allama Prabhu, Akka Mahadevi and more have left behind pearls of wisdom in the forms of vachanas. Coming to the modern literary era, writers such as Kuvempu himself, Dara Bendre, Shivarama Karanta, S.L. Bhairappa, Girish Karnad and more have upheld the old standards and strive to elevate it further. The highest literary award of the country, Jnana Pita, was backed by Karnataka eight times which is the second highest after our national language, Hindi. Alongside the literary intellectuals of the state, the skills of architects is more evident here in Karnataka than anywhere else in the world. The Dravidian style of architecture, Sangama style, Nagara Veshara style and more have all been experimented with, enhanced and presented by the architects of Karnataka that has made the state one of India's biggest tourist attractions. The Vijayanagara Empire, which once stood as a symbol of richness of the state, today stands as a symbol of architectural excellence. Hampi, within the empire, houses the biggest architectural masterpieces such as the Stone Chariot, Ugra Narasimha statue, the Vijaya Vittala temple, the Virupaksha temple and more. The capital of the Chalukya Empire Badami, capital of the Hoysala Empire Halebidu and Belur are wonders carved from stone. Other destinations such as Aihole and Pattadakallu are still amongst the biggest architectural wonders of the world. Towering over it all, the gigantic monolithic statue of Gomateshwara at Shravana Belgula is hands down one of the greatest wonders we'll ever see. Also, one of the seven wonders of the country, the Gol Gumbas represents one part of Karnataka's history and the palaces in Bengaluru and Mysuru represent another part of it. Most of the heritage sites in Karnataka have been listed by UNESCO as World Heritage Centres. The state festival of Karnataka, Dasara, was a phenomenon during the rule of Vodayas in Mysore. The state has kept the intensity of the phenomenon intact even today, and tourists and devotees from around the world rush to Mysore every year during Dasara. The festival is celebrated like no other in the country for 10 days as goddess Chamundi is worshipped on Vijayadashami. The Jambu Savari or the elephant procession that carries the goddess for worship is a carnival like no other in India and the way Mysore palace lights up is an unmatched treat to the senses. Even today, the Darbar or the royal gathering is conducted symbolically during Dasara. Rare and magnificent, the Mysore Dasara is a pride of the state for all the right reasons. While Mysore Dasara attracts tourists from worldwide, other aspects along the state keep them exploring and coming back. One state, many worlds is a one-liner that describes Karnataka's tourism potential. Kodagu, Mysore, Bengaluru, Chikmagalur, Coastal Karnataka, Dakshina Kannada, Vijayapura, Hasana, Hampi, Murdeshwara, Gokarna, Joga, Shivamogga. The list simply goes on forever. The best part is, diversity is the key factor of Karnataka heritage for it has a vast variety of experiences to offer, ranging from spirituality to entertainment, history to nature. Karnataka tourism appeals to each one.
Biological diversity is yet another highlight of Karnataka. The hotspot of ecosystems essence, the Western Ghats, situated parallel to the coastline of Karnataka, gives the state with an extensive nature protection, unassailably expanding over a land of 38,720 km square. The Western Ghats within Karnataka are a biological heaven. World's most unique and sought after biologic species are found here in Karnataka, which makes the state an ecosystem of intensity on its own. Other than the Western Ghats, natural destinations such as Bandipura, Baner Ghatta, Kudre Mukha, Nagarhole, and Dandeli National Pass are sought after all through the year. Agriculture is the dominant source of income and livelihoods in Karnataka. Food crops and commercial crops are given equal importance here, but the state is prominently recognized around the country for its production of excellent quality silk and sandalwood. Not to mention, each part of the state produces its own food variety that Karnataka proudly seeks and relishes. Well, the list of features of Karnataka seems to be unending after all. For there is still the reference of the folklore and cultural art forms of the state that have been passed down from generation to generation as an identity of the great Kannada state. The lifeline of the cultural heritage of Karnataka consists of folklore such as Yakshagana, Kamsale, Tollukunita, Gombeyata, Viragase, Karagakunita, Kattiyata, Hulivesha, and so much more. Amongst the folklore, Special attention goes to the forms of worship that are highly intense by nature and also highly appealing to watch. To name a few, Bhuta Radhane, Naga Mandala, Kambala, etc. Karnataka has been a strong withholder of its self-identity but has also played the role of an adapting mother who has happily welcomed different cultures into her family. While the native cultures of Karnataka are in themselves an embodiment of diversity, acceptance of immigrant cultures has only made the state richer and more glorious over time. Embracing modernism with equal grace, Karnataka has also turned itself into a progressive hub for education, employment, scientific orientation, and commercial involvement. The country's most reputed space institute that has made India proud on an international level, ISRO, is situated in the capital city of Karnataka. Bengaluru is also home for the National Science Institute, which is amongst the world's top 100 science institutes. Kalwar in Karnataka has roofed India's ambitious atomic energy project Kaiga. Well, the tech hub in Bangalore is the country's most sought after employment center which has turned Karnataka a home for innumerable immigrants from around the world. Embodying all the above mentioned aspects of Karnataka, a state within the state is an accredited heaven of majesties. Coastal Karnataka, consisting Udupi, Dakshina Kannada and Uttar Kannada, is accepted to be the most progressive part of the state, strongly rooted in its historic heritage. It is known, though informally by many, that Coastal Karnataka is the education hub of the country. With an educational institute arising from every corner of the area, a doctor an engineer or a double graduate hailing from every household here, Coastal Karnataka has sustained itself as the most sought after centre for education in India for a long time now. However, it isn't just about education. Coastal Karnataka has also been accredited 
to be one of the most diversely blessed heritages in the world. Not only is this coastal city a proud cradle of numerous cultural and folk heritages, it has also welcomed migrating cultures with open arms. Culture, traditions, history, education, literature and modernization go surprisingly hand in hand here. And it is only natural that every individual who sets foot on this blessed land shall love it with all his heart. Incorporating all these ideals and contributing notably towards the educational legacy of coastal Karnataka is an institution that established 25 years ago. Within a span of less than three decades, this institution has turned into an unmatched empire housing within itself all the glories of India. Youth, academics, culture, sports, employment and achievement can all be combined to be synonymic with Alva's Education Foundation. This is an empire where 26,000 students currently pursue their interests, guided by over 5,000 faculties. This institution is the proud pioneer of the grandest literary and cultural events in Karnataka, namely Nodisari and Virasat, which attract a crowd of over 5 lakh people every year. This very foundation was the training ground for four students from the same college who represented India in Rio Olympics in 2016. Alva's PU College is the proud alma mater of Nandini KU, the lady who topped the UPSC exams in 2017. Culturally, academically and on sports platforms, the achievement list of Alva's Education Foundation goes on practically forever. Amidst all the glory sprouting from every nook and corner of this institution, what makes it notable is the sheer number of students availing free education here, owing to their talents and competence. Out of the 26,000 students, 4,500 of them are here on adoption scheme through which they avail free education, accommodation and cultural or sports training from Alvas. The cultural majesty at Alvas is enhanced exponentially by the students who chose to spend their precious student life here from different regions of the country as well as abroad. Alvas is a proud host for students from Sri Lanka, Nepal, France and Bhutan. Students grace the campus with diversities that they bring from their natives like Kerala, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and the beautiful Northeast. You are here at the embodiment of the essence of Karnataka state and India. You are here at Alvas, at an educational institute that incorporates in its students much more than the prescribed set of lessons. You are here at a sacred destination where lakhs of students have taken home culture, manners, dignity and spirit. Alvas Education Foundation is where hearts are taught to beat for the state for its identities, for the country and its heritage. You are here at the abode of ambitions that has, in 25 years, transformed the map of Modubidri and coastal Karnataka. And it shall continue to spread the virtue of progress guided by cultural orientation. Alvas is our emotional connect. Alvas is our pride.